let's just get to the root of the issue right here. Where is your confidence level that the Mariners are in the dance at the end of the regular season after game 162? If we're rating it on a scale of one to 10, I'm at a five. And that's kind of a, I kind of hate that answer because I'm not, that's, this is me not taking a side. And it frustrates me. I I hate not having to take a side because I also just watched the Mariners crush the A's and I could easily see them do it each of the next two times. My pessimism, my pessimism, I pronounced that right, stems from the fact I think the pitching staff is running on fumes and that there is no reinforcements left. We touched on this last week and the final 10 game stretch of the season is really going to push them. It's really going to push them to the edge of what this pitching staff can possibly do. But then I'm on the other side, and I just watched this team in August dominate. Just absolutely dominate. We know they can hit. We know they can pitch. We know this pitching staff is the best in baseball. We know it would be the best rotation in the playoffs if they managed to make it. So why can't that team go in a 10-game stretch and go in seven or eight of those 10 games against teams that you probably can and should beat at this point from how they've shown you that they played here in the second half? Why can't they do that? I'm just so torn at this point, Lyle. I don't know what side to pick. And this is seems like just life as a Mariners fan. We're pretty close on our grades. And full transparency here, I wrote this out and gave out my confidence level on paper before the Monday game today against the A's. So I gave it a 6 out of 10. We're pretty close. I'm a tad more optimistic than you are. And look, the two sides of this coin are, if you want to look at the negative side, there are reasons to have pessimism. This team has not fared well against teams with records above 500 this year. Last year, that wasn't an issue, by the way. The Mariners had a record better than 500 when they played teams that were over 500 last year. Sometimes their deal last year was they would just play up or down to the level of competition and they would lose games that they should not have lost. Well, this year they haven't fared as well against teams above 500. They're not playing great baseball right now. We just saw what happened against the Dodgers. We remember the extra innings loss about a week ago to the Angels. But I don't know. The other side of this coin is I just have this odd feeling that for how cold they've been over the last week or week and a half, or really September as a whole, something's going to click when it matters most. This is There's no analytics behind this. There's no numbers. There's no saber metrics. This is just a gut feeling that something's going to click for this team when it matters most down the stretch, along with the fact that if it is going to boil down to them and the Rangers, we talked about this with Derek Van Riper last week, the Rangers outside of a short winning streak just a few days ago have played awful baseball over the last five or six weeks. And as we currently speak, they're not playing good baseball at all. Their rotation's depleted. Their bullpen is awful. So the Mariners fare better in both of those categories. And if it's going to boil down to that and the Rangers trying to hold leads in close games against the Mariners when they play over these seven games, I like the Mariners' chances much more than I do the Rangers. So I'm not giving it a 9 out of 10, but I'm a little more optimistic and went with the 6 out of 10. My pessimism stands mostly from this performance in September. There's some troubling trends here, especially with the pitching staff. Not just do they have a four, a nearly 4-5 four, ERA for this month. The FIP is near 5 at 4.75. The walk rate is up. The strikeout rate is down. The weighted on-base average, which we've talked about here before, up 44 points. The slugging percentage is up 60 points this month. Those are all... Trends the Mariners have been very good at negating, especially on the pitching side this year, and they're all going in the wrong direction. And it's not like you faced elite, elite, elite offenses this month. The Reds are a good offense. The Dodgers are a, a pretty, pretty darn good offense. But the Dodgers didn't even have an unbelievable offensive series. I thought. I thought they just, for the most part, executed well. Besides that, I mean, the Mets and like the Rays hit pretty well. But it's just some trends that I do not like. I do not like. And that's, that's coupled with the fact the team has hit uh, a, a WRC plus of 70 uh, of 97 this month. Does it factor in at all for you that not only do the Rangers have an atrocious, atrocious bullpen, but they 
also no longer have Max Scherzer. Obviously, they don't have Jacob deGrom. Evaldi just got off the IL, and guys like Martin Perez have not pitched well this year. Like That rotation is hanging on by a thread in Texas. I think most of my grade came from looking at the Mariners and less around them, which is probably a mistake on my part because the playoff picture is, it is about the Mariners, but it's also about who they're competing with for these playoff spots. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm really fascinated. I cannot wait for these next couple of weeks. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. (laughs) It's really going to be great. As a baseball fan, it's all you can ask for. I mean, if it, if you're not a Mariners fan and you're just looking in at the AL West and the AL wild card, you'd say, sign me right up. This is what baseball is all about. It's going to be as exciting as it can possibly be in the last couple of weeks here. Now let's twist the narrative like this. As we sit here on Monday night after the Mariners just won against the A's, can they go eight and four the rest of the year? And that includes the next two games against the A's, because if they do that, they're at 90 wins and 90 wins is usually that magic number that gets you. In. Yes, they can go eight and four. Yeah. Okay. So yep. then if they if they can sweep the A's, which let's stress this again, with Luis Castillo and George Kirby going Tuesday and Wednesday, they should. There's no reason not to. Then it turns into six and four. In those ten games, if they can go six and four, that should do it. Here's a little bit more where my nerves come from of my pessimism for my grade. Again, being a five out of ten. Against the Texas Rangers, who we know still can hit. That, that's the one thing that has stayed with them throughout this. Hasn't been quite as elite as, as the first half of the season, but they still do have a number of quality big league hitters, including what San Shohei Otani is the American League MVP and Corey Seager. Brian Wu and Bryce Miller will start three games against Texas. Three of the seven games upcoming over this final stretch of the season will be started by Bryce Miller and Brian Wu, who both faced the Rangers at the Rangers' peak in June and got obliterated. So we're hoping this time around there will be some adjustments made and that those two can pitch better. It's been a shaky stretch for those for both of them. We've, we've highlighted it. It's definitely been a shaky stretch down here as their innings have been stretched out a little bit more. And relying on those guys for nearly half of your starts against the Texas Rangers, the team you need to beat does lean for some more pessimism. I like how we're going back and forth on the optimism, pessimism here, because I'm about to throw another punch of optimism at you. Brian Wu's last two starts have been pretty good. Bryce Miller's start on Saturday against the Dodgers was pretty solid. And let's be fair to Brian Wu. As we said all the way back when, when they played the Rangers in that series you're referencing, That was Brian Wu's debut, and it was on pretty short notice. He didn't have his best stuff. I think Brian Wu is a little different now than he was back in June. I'm just going to, like, I'm not trying to be a pessimist. I'm really not. But I'm going to stress the difference between the Angels lineup Brian Wu faced last week, the A's lineup he faced tonight, and the lineup of the Texas Rangers. It's like, that's fair. That is fair. I can get behind that. Yeah, so... Brian's going to need to pitch better. That's for sure. I don't even know what to expect from Brian Wu. It's like f- five innings and three or four runs acceptable, I guess. If, if like the Rangers pitching staff really is in tatters, that in theory should be enough. But I don't know. Five and four might be cutting it close. If he can go five and two, you'd take it. Five and t- Yeah, okay. Well, I'm at the point where I'm a see and believe at five and two against the Rangers, at least against the Rangers, against the Astros. I mean, notice how we haven't even talked about the Astros, the team currently in first place. Well, the Mariners have handled them this season, like no issue at all. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm really like nervous about the Astros. They lose two of three to the Astros. It's more of an, oh, well, at this point, because they've taken care of business against the Astros this season. They haven't against the Rangers. The AL West at this point is a, is a luxury. First and foremost, you have to get into the playoffs. And I will say, Bryce Miller's last start was against a very good team in the Dodgers. Five and a third shutout, one walk. That's something to build on. I know Brian Wu hasn't faced the toughest opponents in his last couple outings. Bryce Miller went five and a third shutout against the Dodgers. Maybe he's building. Remember, his starts don't even need to be good anymore, as I highlighted. It just needs to be good enough. And at that point, this point, good enough 
is all we require. Okay, so officially, I'm at a five for my confidence level. You're at a six. It is funny how two weeks ago we did this. I mean, we'd probably be, what, three points higher each? Yeah, for sure. So. Baseball will do that to you, won't it? It takes you on a roller coaster all season long, especially when you're a Mariners fan. You get swung on that roller coaster in all different ways. By the way, if you're listening, let us know in our comments what you'd grade the Mariners' confidence level of making the playoffs or what your confidence level is in the Mariners to make the playoffs. You can tag us on Twitter, on Instagram, YouTube, whatever you want. Let us know where your confidence level's at. 